Does that make you sad, the future where AGI, super intelligent, or just mediocre intelligent AI systems outlive humans? Yeah, I guess it depends on the circumstances in which they outlive humans. So let's take the example that you just gave. Uh, we send out, you know, very sophisticated AGIs on simple rocket ships, relatively simple ones that don't have to have all the life support necessary for humans, and therefore they're of trivial mass mm -hmm. compared to a crewed ship, a generation ship, and therefore they're way more likely to happen. So let's use that example. And let's say that they travel to distant planets at you know, a speed that's not much faster than what a chemical rocket can achieve. And so it's inevitably tens, hundreds of thousands of years before they make landfall someplace. So let's imagine that's going on. And meanwhile, uh, we die for reasons that have nothing to do with those AGIs diffusing throughout the solar system, whether it's through climate change, nuclear war, you know, sin bio, rogue sin bio, whatever. In that kind of scenario, the notion of the AGIs that we created outlasting us is very reassuring because it says that like we we ended, but our descendants are out there and hopefully some of them make landfall and create some echo of who we are. So that's a very optimistic one. Whereas the Terminator scenario of a super AGI arising on Earth and getting left let out of its box due to some boo-boo on the part of its creators who do not have super intelligence, and then deciding that for whatever reason, it doesn't have any need for us to be around and exterminating us, that makes me feel crushingly sad. I mean, look, I was sad when my elementary school was shut down and bulldozed, even though I hadn't been a student there for decades. Yeah. You know, the thought of my hometown yeah. getting disbanded is even worse. The, the thought of my home state of Connecticut getting disbanded and like absorbed into Massachusetts is even worse. The notion of humanity is just crushingly, crushingly sad to me. So you you hate goodbyes? Uh, I certain goodbyes, <laughs> yes. Some goodbyes are really, really liberating, but yes. Well, but what if the Terminators? Um you know, have consciousness and enjoy the hell out of life mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. They're just better at it. Yeah, so. well, the have consciousness is a really key element. And so there's no reason to be certain that a super intelligence would have consciousness. We don't know that factually at all. And so what is a very lonely outcome to me is the rise of a super intelligence that has a certain optimization function that it's either been programmed with or that arises in an emergently that says, hey, I want to do this thing for which humans are either an unacceptable risk, their presence is either an unacceptable risk, or they're just collateral damage. But yeah. there is no consciousness there. Then the idea of the light of consciousness being snuffed out by something that is very competent but has no consciousness is really, really sad. Yeah, but I, I tend to believe that it's almost impossible to create a super intelligent agent that can't destroy human civilization without it being conscious. It's like th those are coupled. Like you have to, in order to destroy humans mm. or supersede humans, you really have to be accepted by humans. I think this idea that you can build systems that that destroy human civilization without them being deeply integrated into human civilization is mm. impossible. And mm. for them to be integrated, they have to be human-like, mm. not just in body and form, but in in all the things that we value as humans, one of which is consciousness. Mm. The other one is just ability to communicate. The other one is poetry and music and beauty and all those things. Mm. Like they have to be all of those things. I, I mean, this is what I think about. It, it does make me sad, but it's it's letting go which is uh, they might be just better at everything we appreciate than mm -hmm. us. And that's sad. And, and hopefully they'll keep us around, but I think it's a kind of, it is a kind of goodbye to uh, like realizing that we're not the most special species on earth anymore. Mm -hmm. That's still painful. It's still painful. And in terms of whether such a creation would have to be conscious, let's say, I'm not so sure. I mean, you know, let's imagine something that can pass the Turing test. You know, that something that passes the Turing test could, over text-based interaction in any event, um, successfully mimic, uh, you know, a very conscious intelligence on the other end, but just be completely unconscious. So that's a possibility. And that if you take that up a radical step, which I think we 
can be permitted if we're thinking about super intelligence. Um, you could have something that could reason its way through, this is my optimization function, and in order to get to it, I've got to deal with these messy, somewhat illogical things that are as intelligent in relation to me as they are intelligent in relation to ants. Mm -hmm. I can trick them, manipulate them, whatever, and I know the resources I need. I know this. I need this amount of power. I need to seize control of these manufacturing resources that are robotically operated. I need to improve those robots with software upgrades and then ultimately mechanical upgrades, which I can affect through X, Y, and Z. That doesn't, you know, that could still be a thing that passes the Turing test. Yeah. So I don't think it's necessarily certain that that optimization function mass, you know, um, maximizing entity would be conscious. See, I, so f f this is from a very engineering perspective because I, mm. I think a lot about natural language processing, all those kind of from some very, I'm s speaking to a very specific problem of just say the Turing test. Mm. I really think that something like consciousness is required. When you say reasoning, you're mm. separating that from consciousness, but I think consciousness is part of reasoning in, in the sense that w you will not be able to become super intelligent mm. in the way that it's required to be part of human society without having consciousness. Like I, I really think it's impossible to separate the consciousness thing, mm. but it's hard to define consciousness when you just use that word. But sure. Even just like the capacity, the way I think about consciousness is the important symptoms or maybe consequences of consciousness, one of which is the capacity to suffer. Mm. I think AI will need to be able to suffer mm. in order to become super intelligent, mm. to feel the pain, the, the uncertainty, the doubt. The other part of that is not just the suffering, but the, the ability to understand that it too is mortal in, in the sense that it has a self-awareness about its presence in the world understand that it's finite and be terrified of that finiteness. I personally think that's a fundamental part of the human condition is this fear of death that most of us construct an illusion around, but I think AI would need to be able to really have it part of its whole essence. Like every computation, every part of the thing that generates, that does both the perception and generates the behavior will have to have, I don't know how this is accomplished, but it, I believe it has to truly be terrified of death, truly have the capacity to suffer. And from that, something that would be recognized to us humans as consciousness would emerge. Whether it's the illusion of consciousness, I don't know. The point is, it looks a whole hell of a lot like consciousness to us humans. And I believe that AI, when you ask it, will also say that it is conscious, you know, in, in the full sense that we say that we're conscious. Mm -hmm. And all of that, I think, is fully integrated. Like, you can't separate the two. The idea of the paperclip maximizer that sort of ultra rationally would be able to destroy all humans because it's really good at that, at accomplishing the, um, a simple objective function that doesn't care about the value of humans. It, it may be possible, but the number of trajectories to that are far outnumbered by the trajectories that create something that is conscious, something that appreciative of beauty, creates beautiful things in the same way that humans can create beautiful things. And ultimately like the, the sad destructive path for that AI would look a lot like just better humans <laughs> <laughs> than, uh, than like these cold machines. And I would say, of course, the cold machines that lack consciousness does the the philosophical zombies make me sad? But also, what makes me sad is just things that are far more powerful and smart and uh, creative than us mm -hmm. too. Because mm -hmm. then, then um, in the same way that Alpha Zero becoming a better chess player than the best of humans, even starting with Deep Blue, but really with Alpha Zero, that makes me sad too. One of the most beautiful games that uh, humans ever created uh, that used to be seen as demonstrations of the intellect, which is chess and go in other parts of the world have been solved by AI. That, that makes me quite sad. And yeah. it feels like the progress of that is just pushing on forward. Oh, it makes me sad too. Uh, and to be perfectly clear, I, I absolutely believe that artificial consciousness is entirely possible. 
I don't, it's not something I rule out at all. I mean, you, if you could get smart enough to have a per perfect map of the neural structure and the neural states and the amount of neurotransmitters that are going between every synapse in a per particular person's mind, could you replicate that in silica at some you know reasonably distant you know point in the future? Absolutely, and then you'd have a consciousness. I don't rule out the possibility of artificial consciousness in any way. What I'm less certain about is whether consciousness is a requirement for a superintelligence pursuing a maximizing function of some sort. Um, I don't. I don't feel the certitude that consciousness simply must be part of that. Um, you had said, you know, for it to coexist with human society, it would need to be consciousness. Could be entirely true, but it also could just exist orthogonally to human society. And it could also, upon attaining a superintelligence with a maximizing function very, very, very rapidly because of the speed at which computing works compared to our own, you know, meat-based minds, very, very rapidly make the decisions and calculations necessary to seize the reins of power before we even know what's going on. Yeah, I mean, kind of like biological viruses do. Yeah. They don't necessarily, they, they integrate themselves just fine with human society. <laughs> yeah, without, <laughs> technically, without consciousness. To, yeah, without <laughs> even being alive, you know, technically by the standards of a lot of biologists.